Very happy you're all here. Thank you. Let's see. Wait. Did you see my glasses? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so welcome everyone. Um, I first want to thank uh, Sapienza University of Roma and the Department of uh, Social and Economic Sciences for hosting Innovate Heritage 10 years after. And um, I'm here today to talk about what brought us here and the evolution of innovating heritage. Um, so I'm going to be mostly reading off of this, but I have a lot of visual aids, which I'm very excited to share everybody. We have a lot of photo documentation from the conference that we now have a great opportunity to see. So uh, Innovate Heritage is a research platform and conference series that was founded in 2013 in Berlin, Germany, by myself, Elliot Greeny Sauke, and my colleague, um, not quite yet, um, <laughs> Katerina Benincasa. Um, we began Innovate Heritage because we were both inspired and wanted to go deeper uh, to expand on contemporary heritage discourse and to bring uh, the critical care, um, cultural uh, theory into larger context and conversation paralleling both um, uh, the work uh, both of us had been doing up until that point. I'll just do thumbs up for changing things. We didn't talk about our system yet. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so. Uh, Katerina came uh, to the World Heritage Studies graduate program where we met um, when she was given the responsibility of managing an art history library that um, complemented her body of work exploring the collaboration points between science and arts through her NGO Polyhedra. Um, and she was additionally translating a book um, by a mathematician and philosopher called um, Gigi Sassieri, um, who wrote a book called um, Uslid um, Vindicated um, from Every Fleck, where he tries to prove Ulysses right, um, but in fact, inv in fact invents um, um, Olympic uh, geography. So, you know, light reading. But <laughs> she, um, she came to the graduate program focused uh, or I came to the graduate program focused on UNESCO World Heritage manage, uh, Management as a practicing artist and cultural worker organizing in documentary, <laughs> film, uh, in documentary film and the performing arts and queer cultural space curation. So a small cohort from our program um, representing Italy, Germany, the US, Iran, Colombia, and Lebanon commuted from Berlin, probably other nationalities I'm forgetting, I apologize, um, commuted from Berlin to Brandenburg, Brandenburger Technische Universität campus in Cottbus several times a week, which helped cultivate further discourse um, from our program reflecting and um, relationship building as we cross the farmlands outside um, the outside Berlin uh, through both the winter snows and the summer sunrises. We get up really early. So uh, it was on these train rides that Katerina and I fell into deeper thinking and the idea exchange, <clears throat> um, specifically inspired by our theory of culture class taught by our now collaborator, uh, Dr. Klaus Christian Zeba. While um, uh, heritage thought leadership from publications such as Uses of Heritage 2006 by Laura Jane Smith, um, Stuart Hall's Whose Heritage, Unsettling the Heritage, Reimagining the Post Nation 2002, and Archive Fever um, 1995 um, by Derrida, had allowed for um, critical discourse and heritage scholarship um, asking the why and how 
for um, and for by and whom within historical uh, relationship and cultural politics of heritage and what they were centering, protecting, and validating. It would also felt like um, a conversation that was being sidelined um, and had only just started within the heritage academic field as opposed to other fields of study which had sometimes much broader comprehension or honest relationship with uses of power, power and authorship uh, with liberal um, historical lens. So, but interwoven within the critical discourse of power as it relates to authenticated heritage, heritage discourse and certifications from UNESCO, there was the question not only of what fits within uh, the definition of heritage, but when is heritage. So the what and when of heritage led Katerina and I to into discussing <clears throat> why this was a much needed conversation within the field that felt disconnect disconnected from aspects of contemporary scholarship, pondering how we could create a space to explore these pressing lines of inquiry with others in order to expand critical heritage discourse. Our definition of heritage starts with the United Nations Education, Scientific and Cultural Organization, uh, UNESCO definition that heritage is our legacy from the past that we live with today and that we pass on to future generations. <clears throat> heritage elicits cultural value, both tangible physical space object uh, form landscapes as um, uh, Emma was uh, discussing earlier, and um, intangible living practices as defined by UNESCO conventions. Where do our cultural values come from and where are they taking us? Does heritage speak to prestige, cultural dominance of upper classes, and the retention of power as cultural legacy? How does heritage embody and represent our, <clears throat> our values philosophically towards mythology, spirituality, and ethics? Does the heritage we lift up, be it a living cultural tradition, a festival, or a monument embody the legacy of who we aspire to be and the future we are moving towards? What stories are we telling of the past <clears throat> that create the cultural realities of the now, thus placing us in relationship to our future selves? The what of heritage, starting with values, ethics, and power, also ask the question of what is included in heritage, the creation of culture, but also when something becomes the past or legacy. This brings us to innovation, um, to innovate heritage as a way to activate, to be in conversation with the creation and embodiment of the future, as well as with the potential iterations <clears throat> of the future within the practice of relating to our heritage to the past within the now. Um, innovation acknowledges also the inevitability of change, leaning into the difficult or uncomfortable aspects of heritage, uh, the heritage conversation, interrupting risk aversion, garnering cultural self-reflection and awareness, but also innovation as a way of looking or being open to inquiry, to challenging boundaries and the way things have always been done. We also do not mean innovation, innovating in the way of change for the sake of change, akin to growth for the sake of growth, not innovation as a form of industrial dominance. Innovation here speaks to the spirit of inspiration, uh, experimentation, creativity, and curiosity to the muses, uh, to the lines of inquiry that allow necessary and inevitable shifts in culture and history to our critical awareness of how we look back at what we place value on, on the stories we tell about ourselves and where and who we come from. Innovate Heritage in 2014 was about conversations between arts and heritage, <clears throat> looking at how concepts of heritage and creative art making practices are intrinsically linked through creativity and innovation as foundational to culture. Heritage is often the result of creative vision realized, new and innovative at its time of creation, but now contextualized as the past, such as the works of Bernini and Elena Cruz um, here in Rome. It is thus inevitable that we link uh, this to the question of when is heritage? When does something become heritage or cultural legacy from the past? Heritage can reflect what was popular at its time, but can also lift up the works of creatives and cultural workers long after they were gone. 
Heritage requires an active relationship, care and attention to sustain this cultural value. Where then is the line around relationship to heritage when activated within the contemporary creative um, processes and art methodology um, and form of knowledge creation as, the, as an expansion of, on traditional discourse, very often underutilized or excluded from formal scholarship? But if we want to do better to actually explore the deeper nuances and complexities of culture, of heritage, of currency and economy, of value and power, it is required that more is done to include diversified forms of knowledge so that we may better see and understand the complexities of the world and societies we inhabit. This also can be said of the organic intellectual outside the academy, <clears throat> the challenging and challenging who is permitted to inhabit the title and thus power deemed um, being, uh, being deemed an expert. We see this within a global application of UNESCO, for example, with authority and expert status being placed primarily or solely on Western scholars as opposed to indigenous and global South cultural bearers with intergenerational lineages as wisdom keepers. In the context of heritage practices, managing cultural spaces, spaces or the merging of both in landscapes outside of European colonial nation states. Innovate Heritage, oops, changed my slide too. Um, uh, arts and creative practice as knowledge production and as research methodology is also important to look at within innovating heritage in regards to the fact that creative practice and knowledge production are also based on the lineage of human thought and creation, our contemporary arts acting as interpretations of our inherited lineages of creativity building onto culture to what was before, each step layering um, to create what are layers of the Earth's crust, the urban and natural landscapes around us that reflect all that has been on top of um, the layers that were before. We see this here in Rome with iterations of cities on top of cities. All these elements, especially those um, we also cannot see, but that have influenced um, the outcomes of where we are now are worth considering. Why is creative practice from the past something valued more than contemporary layers that, <clears throat> that are building on what has come before? Looking at or being in the conversation with the arts and contemporary creative practice along with heritage scholarship and practitioners opens up a third space where the merging of an interdisciplinary discourse that mixes creativity, performance, play, emotion, and stillness in the experiencing of creative expression alongside theoretical, theoretical framing and thought allows us to both feel and think deeper into what and why um, from new angles and access points. Okay. We are here 10 years after to look back at what the original concept um, that Innovate Heritage offered us, um, what ideas and creative forms were presented, what knowledge was generated, and what our perspective is on this a, dec a decade in retrospect. To look back at a concept of heritage allows us to see ourselves and our thoughts in new ways, an ever evolving process of building bridges between different selves, allowing us to reflect into deeper layers of reflection and honesty and how we see things and the positional moments and perspectives informed by experiences that have brought us to the now. But what happened, what, what was happening 10 years ago, this conference that took place um, after long conversations and train rides between Cottbus and Berlin. Um, as mentioned before, Katerina and I came up with the concept through pure visionary excitement and a hopeless romance with organizing optimism, as well as uh, entrenched belief that we cannot speak beauty, we cannot speak beauty, aesthetics, culture, cultural and artistic value without calling artists into play. In other words, inspiration. I had already organized nearly 10 different international gatherings from a myriad of queer feminist art festivals to working with the national performance, the US National Performance Network and Belgian IETM International Network for Contemporary Performing Arts, while Katerina had organized um, exhibition symposiums and publications <clears throat> through her NGO Polyhedra. This was not 
um, an assignment or even something that had been suggested as something graduate students had done before. But we contacted our university and potential venues and organizational partners to invite them to support Innovate Heritage. We formed a scientific board of international experts um, in art and heritage, then generated a timeline and asked our international study program colleagues to join our organizational team. After articulating our concept and creating an open call, we launched the organization of the three-day conference that was to be held at ZKU Center for Art and Urbanism in Berlin, which you can see here. The three-day conference was live-streamed by the same partner organization who is hosting our live stream today in Rome, um, HowlRound Theater Commons, based in out of Emerson College in Boston, the US. Uh, the funding we gathered for the conference was mostly through in-kind support through, um, from BTU Cottbus and stipends from the British Council for, from, for presenters from the UK, with the venue and catering being covered by attendee registration, as well as discounts from um, for on accommodation being provided through some local health hotels. These details are being pointed to in order to clarify the energy and motivation not only of the intellectual inquiry of the launch of Innovate Heritage, but also the large collective effort that allowed it to flourish as such a powerful cultural gathering. There, were, there was enthusiasm for the concept, reflection on the fact that it was opening the window for some fresh air and energy to enter the heritage field, in addition to BTU Cottbus, Zetko and the British Council. We brought in partnership uh, with the German Commission for UNESCO, Oriental Heritage Without Borders, a group founded by Iranian scholars in Berlin, Kultur Stiftung der Lande, the um, Azerbaijan student at work, Polyhedra, EG Arts, Vivo, Media Arts Center Canada, as well as support from the Nest Collective in Kenya, and the Prussian Cultural Heritage Foundation, a close cultural advisor to Angela Merkel. In the spirit of innovation and expanding upon um, current heritage discourse as an interdisciplinary conversation, a very democratic approach was taken to both curating speakers and artists, as well as generating a broadly distributed open call, which you can see here, um, from the conference to ensure that scholars, practitioners, and artists outside of our purview had the opportunity to contribute. The conference itself was also broadly publicized to ensure attendance from diverse geographies and academic fields and to ensure that practicing artists were in attendance as a part of the discourse and knowledge exchange, interrupting gatekeeping created by staying within the professional and personal networks of the organizers. This resulted as a, um, in a profound and profoundly inspiring program with incredible contributions and represent representation from participants from 45 countries, um, from women engineer students um, from Saudi Arabia to scholars from Brazil, Nigeria, Australia, and beyond. The fact that our heritage program at BTU was also was so incredibly and beautifully diverse with our cohort consisting of 60 students from 30 countries was also an, in, an invaluable asset in supporting and realizing the embodied international diplomacy and exchange that occurred within um, Innovate Heritage. Care was also taken in how we hosted the conference. It was important to us as organizers to have true collaboration in our partnerships, which was essentially, um, was, which was especially true with BTU, uh, ZKU, and Oriental Heritage Without Borders, who supported us with organization, curation, and documentation. It was also central in the value of Innovate Heritage to take care of our presenters and attendees, providing meals and drinks throughout and thoughtfully programmed uh, rotation of lectures, breakout sessions, panels, music, theater performances, film screenings, guided tours of the neighborhood, uh, engagement with existing installations in the space, and a visual art venissage in the basement of Zekau. While Katerina and I did the big lift of founding and directing the organization and the organization and curation of, um, of the conference, I would be remiss to not also mention our organizational team who are instrumental in realizing the launch of this initiation. Our organizational team was composed of Vusala uh, Javara, um, Azerbaijan, um, Anastasia, Muratova, Russia, Dana Rubek Mak, Germany, Courtney Hotchkiss, US, 
uh, Kenny Chow, Hong Kong, and Anar um, Ayubov, uh, Azerbaijan. We also must make mention and express gratitude for the organizational partnerships who helped us open the conference, including um, Professor Dr. Christoph um, Wolf, uh, Vice President of the German Commission for UNESCO, Simona Kadar, the then Program Coordinator of World Heritage Studies at BTU Cottbus Senfenberg, um, Matthew Beaver, <coughs> Beaver is the Art Program Coordinator of the British Council in Germany, Dr. Soyara Adam Barak, and um, the President of Oriental Heritage Without Borders, and the one and only Matthias Einhoff, the founder, a founding member of uh, Zentrum für Kunst und Urbanistik. In looking back at the curation and programming of Innovate Heritage 2014, um, we talked about heritage then, um, uh, how we talked about heritage then was clearly influenced by where we were in Germany and in the world at that moment within global politics, technically, tech, um, <clears throat> technologically pressing economics as well as environmental realities. The panel discussion, Syrian arts and heritage in danger, curated by Oriental Heritage Without Borders with moderation by Sapita Zarin Galam from Iran and Germany, uh, and speakers Mohammed Ramadan uh, um, Syrian from Syria, Belgium, um, Maomad, excuse me, um, Charlotte Bank, uh, Germany, Switzerland, and Khaled um, Marzir, uh, Syria, Germany, was organized in response to acknowledge the intensity and of the conflict occurring in Syria. Um, a pressing and deeply relevant conversation about heritage in that moment, especially with the outpouring of Syrians into Germany, even within our heritage study program. Uh, in discussing heritage and arts and conflict zones, the, um, the complexity of what was being lost was given space, not only the physical spaces, libraries, and buildings, but the cultures of relationship to one another in the context of physical geography spaces, geographic spaces, and histories. Ten years after, we see reflective heritage literature such as cultural heritage, ethics, and contemporary migration published in 2019 in Rutledge. Um, while out in the world, Syria is still impacted by conflict and our global awareness of conflict has transitioned to focus on Russia and Ukraine, Israel and Palestine and Lebanon, Sudan and Congo, et cetera. Today, I want to acknowledge our beloved World Heritage colleagues in Palestine, Lebanon and Ukraine who are in our thoughts. 10 years after these global politics tied to economics are also occurring in parallel to the rapidly shifting realities of our environment, our heritage ecosystem landscapes, declining biodiversity and the ripple effects of the climate crisis and what we deem most valuable in this world. The train as it were that we are on seems to be increasing in speed. <clears throat> and looking back at the, oops, um, the convention concerning the protection of uh, world um, cultural and natural heritage was adopted by the General Conference of UNESCO on 16 November 1972, inspired by international effort, um, inspired after international efforts were put forth to protect archaeological elements from ancient Europe or ancient Egypt. Uh, in the Nile Valley during the construction of a dam. Just 50 years after the signing of this convention, um, the space race has grown into general consumer trips to outer space, while the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples from 2007 is one more plea from global indigenous communities to heal our relationship to the earth rather than make attempts to leave earth behind. This was illustrated at Innovate Heritage 2014 by indigenous artist Allison Warren, Warden, US Alaska, who performed Calling All Polar Bears, <clears throat> a deeply moving piece about the cultural heritage and significance of polar bears to her people, telling the story of watching the bears slowly getting thinner, the story of a bear swimming longer and longer distances until it was unable to make it to the next ice land mass. Land mass. The story of loss, grief, 
death and extinction of heritage tells us many things at once of interdependent ecosystems and human-animal relations being lost, a new context for mythology stories as well as altered landscapes, a loss of context and meaning as well as a foreshadowing of larger loss to come. The, ex the, ex um, the exhibition Dreams Before Extinction by painter Nima Naima um, from Iran was also striking in its address of the shift in our relationship to animals and natural landscapes as extinction ch changes heritage of the earth. One painting that stands out from her series was um, Siberian Crane. This is her story of that piece. <clears throat> Every fall they fly south from northwestern Russia to spend the cold season in Mazadradran, um, um, Providence, located in the south of the Caspian Sea in Iran. Once there used to be three distinct populations of them in Russia, including western, central, and eastern populations. Three decades ago, 16 cranes from the western population were recorded in Iran. As a result, um, of, ex of extensive hunting along with the de um, degradation of their migration route and habitat, mainly due to oil extraction, um, the population has been diminished to only 16. In 2007, from the Western population, only a pair of mates survived, which were, re which were equipped with a satellite tracking device. They were named by Iran Ira Iranians as Omid Hope for the male and Arzu wish for the female crane. In 2008, on a rainy day, Arzu disappeared from the radar, which was assumed to be caused by a shot from a local hunter. Since then, Omid, the very last Siberian crane from the Western population, migrates to Iran alone. alone. The crane you see in the Siberian crane painting is him. I traveled to the area he was seen in last, but I couldn't find him to take a picture since it was quite a large area. The background of this painting <clears throat> is the rice farms, the region, where what used to be a very rich and safe habitat for migratory birds, um, but has been developed into farms, villas, and now shopping malls. In my painting, um, I am dressed again in the traditional way of the region with colors on my outfit made to match him. There is a tradition in Iran when someone leaves home for a long journey for someone to hold the book Quran over the head of the passenger, usually a female member, um, family member, such as a mother, wife, or sister, in order to ensure the person will come back safely. Until this day in December 2021, Ahmed, our last hope, has still made this journey. 10 years after, it is hard to even speak of the massive loss of glaciers and wildlife, but we know at least that Ahmed is still making his migration. I just Googled it, he's still, he's still out there. So. Okay, next slide, please. I have so much content to go, where are you guys? I'm just going through it, okay. Um, <clears throat> Another important and related aspect of Innovate Heritage 2014 dealt with concepts of curation and relationship to power. <clears throat> Another strong reference back to Stuart Hall's Who's Heritage essay. Rosanna Raymond from um, Aitoy Oyana, oh, not missing it, okay, um, from, uh, from New Zealand, uh, presented a lecture, Koi Aite Warate Goina. Um, I am the museum, and a parallel visual art um, photo series, Soli I Tai, Soli I Uta, Walk on the Sea, Walk on the Land. Her inspired scholarship merged with creative practice illustrated a clever mixing of indigenous Maori and English academic language as one of the many layers of her strategies in creative knowledge generation, interrupting the colonial ob obtaining retention and ongoing curation in Western museums of her cultural ceremonial heritage, not traditionally viewed um, as dead objects, but as living um, essences, as containing living, living essence. 
This critical engagement was mirrored also in the lecture, the curatorial color curtain, who curates post-colonial contemporary African art and the parallel photo exhibition series for Crown and Country and Con um, Conrad Circus by Moody Ayaganda, um, Ayanda um, from Nigeria. Um, he elaborates by saying, I like many other Africans that live on the African continent um, have overlapping identities which unite us with the rest of the world, but also at once enable us to, clear, um, to clearly see that the politics of global cultural production is systematically skewed via the economics of funding in a way that ignores and denigrates the value of African spawn creative expression. Kofi Annan, former Gen um, Secretary General of the United States, um, once said that tolerance, intercultural um, dialogue, and respect for diversity are more essential than ever in the world um, where people are becoming more and more um, closely connected. Nowhere uh, um, is this statement more relevant and truer than in the world of visual arts. The cross-pollination of globalization and its impact on culture has impacted deeply and very obviously the visual culture and visual arts in general. Unfortunately, with this influence comes the, the burdening or the building, um, sorry, the bundled ugliness of the creation of the other by systematic difference through economic and fundamental mechanisms. Additionally, Denise Ferris from Australia, um, who's joined us here today, uh, gave a lecture on being, um, being there, um, imagining narratives of absence, um, complemented by her photographic um, exhibition, Absent Spaces and Visible Lives, bringing together discourse and creative process of geography informed by the non-visible labor of Chinese migrants in the Australian political or physical and cultural landscapes. The conversations around heritage and relationship to power, authenticity, authorship, resource, value, and authentic um, um, aesthetic coming from diverse global perspectives and from creative knowledge bases here illustrate the necessity of these perspectives if we are to understand heritage in a complete manner. These two presentations were also complemented as well by the lecture Biennales uh, as Constructs of Heritage by Lydia Rossner, Bulgaria, Germany, US, looking at the different ways that curation and cultural organization has taken place and continues to evolve within European Biennales. These questions of curation, straddle contemporary art curation, the curation of notoriety of the past through selection and allocation of designation, an ongoing curation of culture that, that transmits cultural currency and value. Um, the notable creative investigations of heritage that took place at the conference also included Where If Not Now by Kunst um, Republik uh, from Germany, the founding collective of ZKU, who discussed their process of constructing the Innovate Heritage venue, a former train station, as well as the installations <clears throat> of a retired mobile station from Serbia titled K67 Urban Rotor by Milo Drag Kuk, Serbia, Germany, Silos, Silo City by Refunk. Um, from the Netherlands, who converted the dis, dis, who converted a disused water storage tank into a small personal dwelling, which paired with their breakout session, "The World Without a Manual," <clears throat> where they turned disused um, car, car tires into recliner chairs, and deportation tracks on the freights freight. Uh, train station Moabit um, by Andres Zugman, Germany, which was a walking tour about the history of Zadkau train station as a deportation location for concentration camps during World War II. The Venissage of Innovate Heritage 2014 additionally had powerful works such as um, the photographs of women's body with projected images titled um, Morat by uh, Angelique Sansosin, um, Syria, Lebanon, mixed media photos of Syrian Museum by Tamam Azam, Syria, United um, Arab Emirates, um, which you'll see more of tomorrow, and 
um, photo, aura, audio, installation, urban collective memories by Oriental Heritage Without Borders with contributions from Iran, Lebanon, and Egypt, um, the large abstract canvas painting series Neanderthal by uh, Sophie Ingermore, um, UK, Ireland, Germany, mythological images um, from Azerbaijan, <clears throat> Uh, weavings by Rajamil Esmir Jamal from Azerbaijan and the photo series Life on Sunderbans by Mitu Mij from um, Bangladesh. This visual art um, exhibition in the basement or keller of the former train station turned collective cultural venue and art artist residency offered a very raw Berlin vibe while also integrating visual vocabulary that echoed the discourse and conversations happening upstairs in the lectures and breakout sessions. The integration of artists within the discourse of heritage created an atmosphere with incredible depth and palpable layered cultivation of knowledge. The opening night Venissage was followed the next by day by uh, Spice Kino Moabit, an open air film program um, uh, while dinner was being served, taking place on the former train station platform in the summer evening air. The film program um, titled Food Diaspora was curated by Julie Saragossa um, with, with films coming from uh, Mexico, Colombia, um, Canada, Korea, and the US. This film showcase and the dinner were also open to the neighborhood residents where they could play with, where they could pay a small fee to join for just um, this part of the Innovate Heritage program building on and supporting the work Zatka who, who had done around relationship building in the area. The visual interpretations of heritage in uh, conversation with the scholarly interpretations of heritage was then complemented in kind by theatrical and musical performances such as Unter den Linden by scholar artist um, Klaus Christian Zeba, Germany, um, also here with us today, um, where he mixed po um, poetics of the tiger with German and Japanese cultural presentation while paralleled, um, which paralleled his lecture, The Futurity of Heritage. Beyond, um, let's see, um, beyond uh, Taegum, Sounds of the Korean Flute was performed by Kim Hylam, uh, South Korea, UK. Next to her lecture, Korean Contemporary Interpretations of Traditional Music Program with additional music performances by Arab Ensemble from Iran, Taiwan, and Germany, and Nayev uh, Sherded uh, from Azerbaijan. Breakout sessions that went further into discussing heritage and relationship to performance included contemporary realities of heritage of Hawaiian performing, um, sorry, uh, contemporary realities of Hawaiian performing arts and the role of cultural identity by Jasmine Koch, uh, US, Hawaii, Germany, in conversation with folk arts, heritage, um, uh, and cultural preservation by Anne O'Dowd. Uh, US, as well as contemporary intangible heritage and archiving memory, music making in the UK, women's liberation movement, DM Withers UK. The movement of creative ideas around our contemporary relationship to heritage in 2014 created a through line to the train that we started on, transporting us to forgotten spaces and sub heritage as presented by Pablo. Um, Arbudleda, sorry, I'm getting tired <laughs> this evening. Um, uh, from Spain and Emil um, Bakev of Macedonia, who are also here with us today, to inquiries of um, Innovate Heritage and uh, inno or Innovate and Innovert Innovatory Heritage by abstract visual artist um, Jacqueline Heron from Netherlands. More questions about the curation of knowledge um, with this uh, specter of knowledge, reconsidering the archive. Um, and artistic action in preserved spaces, cultural identity, or touristic um, trivialization by Manuel Sanchez, Brazil. We were taken into heritage sites with Creative Coast um, 2012, Natural World Heritage, Intergenerational Sports Events, Arts Programs, and Engaging Communities by Daisy, Daisy Sutcliffe, UK, 
with the queries of heritage as po as poetry by Britta Rudolph, um, Germany Bayron, and the currency of creative creativity explored and reenchanting arts and heritage through social creativity by Nick Wilson. And the questions of constructed urbanism and heritage and identity as important factors in the rapidly urbanizing world by Peter um, Soxenmeyer, Germany, Switzerland, um, and with From Ivory Towers to Urban Texture, a map of the future culture by Mikhail Tremarchi, Italy, our host, who is wrote, will be joining us tomorrow, but is here today. <laughs> um, in, shop, in short, our cups were full with so many um, routes through the layered realities of thought, mixing creative fulfillment and storytelling that left, left us with much more nuanced relationship to the conversation between arts and heritage than when we started. While the seemingly pedestrian uh, logistical details of the con conference in 2014 may not seem fitting within an academic scholarly discourse, I would beg to differ. Um, Innovate Heritage was not only the initiation of a space of creative, um, was not only the initiation of a space to create and expand validated forms of knowledge. It was also about generating and bringing in diversified cultural norms uncommon to the fields of thought and heritage um, with, at that time. Since Innovate Heritage 2014, Spaces such as Humboldt Forum in Berlin have begun to adopt similar values and discourse around heritage and contemporary creation, cross-pollination. Academia internationally is beginning to generate and value more and more the interdisciplinary strategies of, of knowledge creation in order to allow for the cultivation, um, for allow for and cultivate innovation necessary for um, the academy to stay connected to the world, um, it is theorizing. Is there a place for the artist at the table in this discourse um, or are artists written about after the fact, um, like the objects and museums considered to be unalive? Where is the now um, in heritage as a way of being in relationship to the living past, our ancestors who live within us and through us? compartmentalization of the past, present, future, general relationships to time is fixed, objects is, um, versus living or even man versus nature are not global truths or complete, complete realities. These ways of seeing can be expanded by creative research and knowledge generation, by cultural bearers and wisdom keepers, by the organic intellectual, even the, the convict and the poor, holding on tightly to the narrative and path of the way things have always been um, with undertones of power over others is destroying our earth and no amount of cultural currency or status can save us from this fate if we do not find different ways of being. I ask these questions simply to say that there is not only <clears throat> um, uh, this is not only about expanding pedagogy methodolo um, methodology and cultural reference but also about looking at where we are now and how um, we have gotten here. Innovate Heritage Center's value on the ethics of how we treat one another and a kind kindness of spirit that requires a deeper listening. Ten years after um, is about the opportunity to reflect again after Innovate Heritage 2014, a research platform that has been alive that has been able to live on through the support and efforts um, and organization of Mikhail Tremarki um, and his conferences connected to the original concept. Um, we also wish to thank uh, Klaus Christian Zeba for his loyal collaboration, organizational support, and motivation. In the 10 years since leaving the BTU Heritage Study Program, <clears throat> Katerina and I have also expanded our interdisciplinary strategies. I went on to become the executive director of Seattle Documentary Association, a producer and instructor with the Washington State Arts Commission and faculty at the University of Washington teaching ethics of storytelling. I've also finalized a 16 year film project um, culminating um, uh, from the documentary Boys on the Inside about three butch and transmasculine Latinx individuals who reunite years after finding their boy identity in women's prison to discuss the long-term impacts of incarceration after their journey through addiction recovery and healing trauma. My work around decolonizing 
and looking at ethics and nonfiction storytelling has been informed by my deep involvement in indigenous and traditional ceremony and healing practices, both from Turtle Island, North America, and following my ancestral roots in Ireland. Katerina has gone on to become the curator of the arts and science program of the European Commission's Joint Research Center, the Science and Knowledge Service of the EC, where artists are invited to explore the research um, facilities and engage with the science developed um, in support of EU policies. Through summer schools, artists' residencies, production of artworks, exhibitions, and a public programming, um, artists, scientists, and policymakers come together to expand on, collaborate, and co-create around topics of priority of the European <coughs> Commission, such as environmental sustainability and governance, AI and the digital transformation, fairness, food systems, circular economy, the ethos of how we collaborate in organizing Innovate Heritage in 2014 is still very present in our organizing and curatorial efforts, continuing its ripple effect of cultural shifting. In uh, 10 years in in 10 years time, we have been um, seen both the light and shadow the world's humanity at play alongside rapidly changing technology, technology realities, climate landscapes and global politics that intensify daily, but we also see hope, new, um, new inventions and creative solutions to these challenges, incredible creative expression, daring feats to speak up for our futures and our humanity, illustrating also the beauty, the beautiful ideas um, and people we, we also come from. Heritage too is made of hope, a, possibi a possibility centered around critical choice and how we wish to construct our future dreams and collective imagination. 10 years ago, two colleagues on a late night train to Berlin were inspired to dream bigger. And so we thank you for being witness to the journey that has brought us here today. Here's to the future of our collective heritage, the world and all the possibilities it holds. Are we on time? Hopeless. Okay. <laughs> um, thank you. I guess you. Denise, are you what? up next? Am I? What am I talking about? What am I doing? You have your presentation now, don't you? No. No? no. Am I mistaken? Um, yeah, 